Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Happy New Year to all my subscribers, my viewers. Thanks for following me. I'm going to start off this year with some stickers. I've had some stickers off uh, some of the people I follow. The first one is A's Workshop. Let me see that. I'll put these on later on after the video, you can have a look. But Aid's a bit of an old school machinist, obviously been in trade. You can always tell when somebody's been in trade by some of the lingo, some of the jargon they come out with. So it's well worth watching if you're a newcomer. He's got a small lathe, made a lot of his own tools. I've learned some tricks off him, some different things, so check Aid out. Next one is Craig. That's Craig's Workshop, another amateur like myself, Craig's got a lathe and a milling machine, he's made his own tools, attachments for his milling machine and lathe, he also does woodwork, he's made his own bandsaw out of wood, it's been interesting, so that's an ongoing thing, and there's quite a bit of technical uh, stuff Craig, some of the computer stuff he does, it goes, it goes straight over my head. So if you're into that sort of stuff, as well as uh, machining, check Craig out. That's Craig's workshop. This next one is uh, Everett. That's Everett's workshop. Everett's another amateur machinist. Works in his basement. Got a lathe, milling machine. Made projects for yourself, for his, for his lathe, for his uh, to assist him with his milling machine. And he also does projects for other people now, which some of them are, you know, for an amateur, it blimey, I think, yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no, you don't get a second chance for some of these projects, so check everything out. This is Rusty Knox. Now, Rusty Knox has got a lathe and a shaping machine, and he's a, a talented amateur machinist. He comes across as a, a bit of a joker, but I think underneath he's, uh, you know, he knows a lot more than he, he lets on. Because I've learnt some tricks off him with a shaping machine. So if you want some tips for your, for your lathe work and uh, how to run a shaper, check Rusty Knox out. This video is about grinding the jaws of a chuck. There's loads of videos out there. I've watched quite a lot. Picked up a few points, how to do it, how not to do it. Do it this way, do it that way. Well, I'm doing this uh, sort of my way. I don't know if it's the right way or wrong way. It's not a brand new chuck. It's an old chuck. It's a uh, bit battered, pretty worn. It'll do for what I need. It's a big chuck for this lathe. It's a four jaw independent. When I take the gap out of this lathe I've got, it fits in the gap. That's the main thing I bought it for. Because yeah, you can actually open the jaws within the gap so I can hold big things provided they're not too deep in the lathe in the uh, in the lathe chuck so this this is just a video of how I grind the jaws internally and externally I've had this video ages I recorded this on my phone just when I was virtually starting YouTube so the footage it's a bit I move about a bit and also I didn't use my lathe for ages because like I said on my introduction uh, I used to do a lot loads of work I used to have a, a lathe with a screw on chuck I used to know like back of my hand sort of thing and I got this one I use it on and off of this and that I hadn't worked my lathe for that long it was just like a shelf it was full of full of stuff And I come to use it with YouTube, and I'd forgotten which way you undo the uh, the locking ring on the on the spindle. So I put on off on it. So, <laughs> so remind me. <laughs> so so thanks very much, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you. This is the chuck body. It's a large chuck for this size lathe, but it's a slim body chuck. 
and it fits within the gap when the gap piece is removed and it's got these four additional T-slots so we can use it as a faceplate. These three pictures are of the actual chuck mounted on the lathe just to show you the size. It seems to have had a, a rough past life but once I machine it up it'll be good enough for what I need. I've gripped this round cog and centralised it within a fuel thou. I've done this by measuring between the 45 degree faces on the chuck. You can see the sizes between each of the four jaws. I've taken the chuck off the lathe and placed it face up on the table of my pillar drill so I can work on it. I turned four silver steel spacers to length to coincide with the dimensions which I wrote on the chuck body. I've turned the chuck around because I'm going to undo jaws 1 and 2 and remove the cog. Then I'm going to tighten jaws 1 and 2 back up again. These silver steel spacers are a good friction fit between the jaws. I had to tap them down lightly with a hammer. To prevent the silver steel spacers from dropping out when they loosen the chuck jaws, I've suspended them with masking tape. When the cog was free, I lifted it out with my more and right scriber. And then I tightened jaws 1 and 2 back up and took the masking tape off. Now the chuck was finished, ready for grinding, I couldn't mount it back in the lathe straight away because I didn't have a tool post grinder. So my next job is to make a tool post grinder. Just when I started doing these videos, I needed a, a grinder. So I thought, well, I'll just make one. Because it's just for me, in two use in here, and it's just made pretty quick. I actually used when I had spare. It's a little uh, wood router, so I took that off, which I don't need, and then that's what I made. Made it in quite a hurry. It's a bit rough, but it's uh, <laughs> it does job. I made this to go inside. Inside here, one of these tool posts, which I rarely use. It's just it's not a Morse tape, but it's just a, one for a boring bar. But I've got my boring bars, which you've got flats on, so that goes in there like that. And this, with it being round, I can tilt it up and down, or I can, uh, yeah, when I revolve it, I can revolve it and tilt it. Whereas if, it, if that was square. I'm stuck. I'm just stuck in one plane. So that goes in there like that. And I can tilt it now. Right, so I'll just go through all this. Nothing flash, just a, a quick job, which I needed. This was a quick job. It's pretty rough, but it works great. I'm boring the internal finish diameter after all the welding's done to help prevent distortion. And then I split it so the bolts can tighten it up. Like I said, the reason I use this router is because I wasn't using it, it was spare. And I, didn't, I didn't have a, a die grinder, and this is just the same anyway. So, plus it's got a 42 mil boss which goes in there. So I took this off. So look, pretty quick, pretty crude, really. It 
covered in dust because I've been using it. That makes it easy because it's got that on. So I turned that. I think that was an old. Can't remember. That was an old, an old project. Put a board out. Welded two nuts on. Then uh, you sawed it through, cut it through. So, have a look at the video, it's pretty easy really, so you could easily make yourself one, you could have a, put a square shaft on there. So the bit of welding, and a bit of grinding, a bit of turning, just basic stuff, but it does job when you need it. And you can still use that as a router if you want, because it just goes back in there like that. 